school board policy, school board policy. I'm the person who brought this to the board, um, to uh, the agenda. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I, at this time, I would like to make, to clearly state that this board did not vote to survey teachers on their feelings on overhead projectors. It is the policy of this board that all surveying of staff be done through the proper channels, which is through the superintendent of schools. And at no time did this board vote for anything to be surveyed of the teachers. We have a policy which is letter BHC, and we do not, <coughs> we are not to communicate directly with school district employees on their opinion or surveying them on what they think. And I wanted to make that clearly stated that we did not vote as a board on that. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'd like to offer a motion. By all means. I motion to change the Hooks at School Board policy BHC to read as follows, which would remove the word communication. All official policies and directives of school employee interest and concern will be communicated to employee members through the superintendent. And the superintendent will employ all such media as appropriate to keep employees fully informed of the board's uh, problems, concerns, and actions. If I get a second, I'll speak to my motion. Second. Uh, I was made, made aware today that it is against school board policy for me to communicate with a teacher in Hookset about school issues. Um, I did, I was the one that asked opinions about the overhead projectors and by no time was I aware of this, that being in conflict with the policy. So I, I do apologize for, um, for a violation of this policy. I find it almost ironic that I can read articles about what teachers feel in other schools, but by our own policies are prohibited to discuss these issues with the people that teach our own children and by which that we create policies for. Um, I chose to, to ask for thoughts about overhead projectors via email so that I could re reach a wider realm of teachers, maybe teachers that don't know me personally and wouldn't feel comfortable um, giving me their ideas. And I'll have to say, um, I received an education about projectors in classrooms that I don't think I could have received from anyone else. So I think it's essential that we have, that we are able to communicate with our teachers. I in no way want to dictate policies or directives or, or to direct any teacher to do anything in particular. But when it comes to gaining their opinions about the education of our children, I think it's essential. So that is why I would like to change this policy to simply remove that one word, which would allow me to have a discussion. Because currently now, during this break, I am not allowed to go over and talk to any teachers present here about anything to do with school. That is prohibited by this policy by the, by the uh, opinion of the New Hampshire School Board Attorney today, that if I were to do that during this meeting, I would violate this policy because I am, in my capacity as a school board member, I'm talking to an employee of the district about school board issues, and that would violate the policy. So I think we need to change that, and uh, I don't think it will drastically change things um, as far as how we operate. We're certainly not gonna be uh, sending out orders or anything of that nature. I will speak to this um, motion. I have, uh, I have also spoken to uh, Barrett Christine at the New Hampshire School Board Association regarding this policy. It is the recommendation of the New Hampshire School Board Association that this policy be on our books. It is also um, due to fair labor practices um, in us approaching our policy setting board um, for us to solicit information from um, teachers on how they feel. If we would like to know how they feel, we can direct the superintendent to survey them, and he has provided us with um, such feedback in the past. I think it puts the teachers in a very awkward position, us survey, surveying them directly. Um, many teachers assumed <coughs> when they received that email 
that it was at the board's direction, which is why I clearly stated that it was not at this board's direction that we did that. I think we also enter into a very slippery slope when we have procedures in place for policies to be looked at by our policy committee that we then at board meetings willy-nilly decide which policies we are and are not going to follow. Life is full of rules, this is a rule, and you don't, you, you just live by the rules that are set forth and the New Hampshire School Board Association has done its homework on every policy they've written. Um, so. May I? Mrs. Corcus, I have to ask you how you know that a large number of teachers assume that email is an official board policy because you're not allowed to solicit information from them. And this is what gets to the ridiculousness of this policy because if we're in the schools and we just want to ask a teacher how it's going, uh, we're violating this policy. This, I talked to the New Hampshire School Board Association. There is no law behind this. They tend to recommend policies that will save you from having any possible problem. There is no problem with a labor law problem unless this is done improperly. And I would offer that a person could go ahead, break this policy and cause us a labor problem anyway, if they want to do something. If somebody wants to, a school board wants to say something really stupid to an employee, they can do that whether this policy is in place or not. I'm about trying to learn how to best represent this district from the people that we employ, the people that have degrees in education, which I don't have. So when I have to sit here and try to weigh what's the best way to spend the money and what's the best things to do, and I am prohibited from talking to teachers, I just find that ridiculous. Well, I'll go back to the fact, David, you were a school board member when you were at a school board meeting. I did not solicit any information from any teacher regarding any email that they received. It was volunteered to me on numerous occasions by numerous staff members that they thought that was a board sanctioned communication that they received. Mrs. Corcus, I, I discussed this with, this, with the, uh, with, with the uh, attorney today too. If it's known by the, by the employee that you are a school board member and you are communicating with them, whether you ask the question or not, you are violating this policy because you are committed, you are communicating with them. Now, the, the silly part about this is I can open my personal email account, call up my list of teachers that I have in my personal email account, and as a parent or citizen of Hookset, I can email them and ask them a question. They can choose to answer or not. And I can do that as a parent if I want to. And if this policy is, is, is in place, I fully intend to do that. I talked to the attorney about that, and he said, yes, because you do not give up any rights as a citizen when you're elected to a board. And I have the right to email a teacher if upset, and I plan to exercise that right personally if I can't do it as a school board member. Sure. that, doc, that um, David Pearl received from teachers that I called Derek Christine and said it's my under like I did the research with him on this is my understanding of the policy what do I do and he clearly said to me as the chairman of the Hooks School Board that I need to make it clear to our 
teach our teachers and administration that that was not a board sanctioned action and that's why I made the statement that I did. No, Chair. I'm, I'm not denying it that the policy is in place and that I in fact violated it. I am arguing that it should be changed. I also violated the policy today when I emailed Matt Woodrow to ask him about bringing a laptop and hooking up to a projector here. He was very helpful to me and told me exactly how I could do it. You know, after I did that, I realized, okay, I just violated the policy here. Um, I should have emailed Dr. Littlefield, put it on his desk, and then he'd have to email. And the, a couple of weeks ago, when I had trouble with my email, I did that, and finally, not finally, I, Dr. Littlefield said, talk to Matt. And these things make sense. You know, if, if there was a per person that was felt that they had some problem with the email, they could certainly bring that forward. But I think to limit ourselves and isolate ourselves and then sit here and make decisions as if we're informed, when we're missing out on huge pieces of information that we can get from our teachers and our staff is a big mistake. And I, I've already said, I mean, if you, you want to keep this policy, I will simply use my, my personal email and I will identify myself as a citizen. And it's going to be, you know, I'm not going to not ask questions. And I think if you look at some of the information that I did receive, you can see the value of it. So, you know, I, I don't think we need to go back to a policy committee to remove one word. <coughs> a policy committee is made to develop policy. This policy is in place. <coughs> My motion is to remove one word and to change the, uh, to change it. Mike? I don't have the policy in front of me. Can you just tell me how your motion makes the policy different? Which word? Or read the sentence with uh, the word? Yes, the, the original policy reads, all official communications, policies, and directives of employees' interest and concern will be communicated to the employee members through the superintendent. There's more, but nothing changes. Mine simply takes out that word communication in the first paragraph, in the first sentence, and says, all official policies and directives of employees' interest shall be communicated through the superintendent. So it allows us to communicate with an employee in the district. Thank you. Is there any more discussion? With there being no more discussion, I will call this to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Can we have a roll call, please? Absolutely. Mike? Aye. Cheryl? Aye. David? Aye. Patricia Porkins? No. 